welcome to Season 2, Episode 6 of the Write Write Podcast, your weekly pep talk for living the writing life. I am Elon. I'm John. And I'm Craig. And today we're talking about why every writer should read. Um, and, you know, it, it seems like a fairly straightforward proposition, honestly. Um, but it's really actually quite important that time is spent reading books uh, of all kinds. Um, like, for instance, I... I like to read a lot of nonfiction, even though I find myself struggling with it. Like I get, I get bored, but I think it's important because I learn a lot. And so I'll read books on science, which I find interesting, and then it'll help sort of inform my science fiction writing. Or I'll read books on, uh, you know, politics or memoirs, and it'll give me sort of insight into different aspects of being a person on Earth that will only inform my writing and make it better. In fact, a reading is. I think it's one of the most important things I do as a writer, um, but I sort of want to kick it over to John because uh, you are a person, and you'll have to pardon my saying this if I'm totally off base, but you're a person with a very well sort of like orchestrated and scheduled life, so far as I can tell, um, because when we've talked about your reading, you say things like, well, I read this in the morning and I read this at night, and I have this amount of time for doing each. Um, so what is your reading habit? Like, what's your pattern? Uh, well, it's, it, I mean, my reading habit has been something I've been trying to get together for some time. So that's a recent thing I started uh, a couple months ago. I still do read at the end of the day and I read in the beginning or in the morning. Um, but what I what I do now is I tend to read a lot of educational material. So I, I get a lot. I'm on a lot of educational email lists. And so I get courses or articles so that I do that for about an hour before I start my work day. And then at the end of the day, I try to read for an hour and it's just, I just read one book at a time. Um, right now I, I just, you know, in the opposite of you with your, how you try to read nonfiction, you prefer fiction. I'm, I find that I always gravitate to nonfiction. I'm addicted to writing craft books and books on editing theory or manuals, as crazy as that might sound, it just, I find I can't get enough of them. So I'm trying to read more fiction. Um, I finished Leviathan Wakes. That was a great book. I, I, I want to read The Name of the Wind. That's, you know, I got into it and I said, next time I get back into fantasy mode, I'm reading this book. Um, but otherwise, I find I'm just sucked into nonfiction. Um, but I've found having an intentional time, make sure it happens. Because for me, I mean, I spend most of my day editing stuff, and it's kind of the same mental muscles. Yeah. And if I don't make a point of setting reading time aside, I, I don't feel like I'm missing anything because I've been reading other stuff all day, but I'm not getting the chance to experience other works that you know might be foundational or there might be some awesome information there. Um, you know, self-improvement, I, I read that sometimes, you know, so that's my habit. What about you, Craig? Um, I am a lot less structured than that. Um, I tend to read all over the place. I might as well out myself. I am a Star Trek fan, big enough of a Star Trek fan to read the books. So I've always got a Star Trek book on the go. Um, other than that, tends to be either more science fiction or potentially thriller. I read a lot of James Rollins, sometimes young adult, sometimes nonfiction, sometimes romance. I've got a paranormal romance Harlequin book that I'm reading, which I also don't like to admit, but I'm being honest here. Um, <laughs> and then sometimes like writing craft books, if John recommends one that I should really be reading. Um, but I'm all over the place, and I don't really have a structured time either. I try to read a little bit before bed, um, but lately I've just been too exhausted to read more than about five pages. So right now my reading is really slow. Um, I used to read about 65 to 70 books a year. Now I'm down to about 12, so I'm really slow, but uh, I read all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I've made my goal to read 52 books a year. Um, a book a week I think is a fairly good clip. Um, I tend to read on my commute. So I work in San Francisco and I live in Oakland. So I walk to a train, take a train to another train, and then walk from that train to the office. And the whole thing is about 45 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on whether or not the train is stuck underground, um, which happens with alarming frequency, just in case you're wondering. Um, but so I, I get the bulk of my reading done on my commute, which I find 
is great because it is that structured time. Um, but I noticed that when I was editing, I was doing less reading. Uh, because I think you're right, John, about this whole notion of like the feeling is using the same muscle. Um, and I sort of lose my um, ability to focus on, on reading uh, if I've been reading with really uh, with deep intent all day. Mm -hmm. um, but, you, you know, I was actually, it, it's interesting the way that you spoke about it initially, John, because my, when I, when I think about it, I always think about it in terms of books. Like, you know, I read books, books are the mm -hmm. thing that I read and nothing else counts as reading. But you're right. If you read educational articles or interesting blogs or you're engaging with the written word in some capacity, like there is a lot, I, I'm, I'm a professional writer of things that are not books, like in my, in my career. And I disregarded them entirely when I thought about what it is, what it means to read as a writer. And that's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, so I also subscribe to emails like that. I, I, I use, um, oh my God, what's it called? You know what it's called, John? Eyebrow? Highbrow. Thank you. Yeah. Um, they have a one called Corby now for five minute info. Yeah, I also yeah. subscribe to that. It's great. And awesome. so Highbrow is a great service and you can sign up. I think that it's 10 emails and they come every morning. Uh, for 10 days and then you sign up for a new class and every time it's a uh, subject it can be anything under the sun um, I tend to focus on the ones that are about productivity because I find that to be the, the area in my life where I'm most lacking but they have interesting classes on art on science on computer programming and all sorts of crazy stuff and then Corby is just kind of like random lessons about random stuff every morning and so the most recent one that I read was about um, the progenitor of music of like Western music. And then a few days ago it was how world war one started. And it's just like all these little informative tidbits. Um, it's actually a really cool service. I recommend it highly. Um, I, I buy a lot of books on craft and I don't end up reading them. Like I have a whole shelf covered in, like I've got the Orson Scott card books. I've got exercise books and I look at them and I say, maybe after this one piece of fiction, like I, <laughs> And, and I use, I have an excuse whereby I, um, I'll convince myself that because I have to stay on track with my review schedule, which is important that I'll read the craft books later. Um, but not too long ago, I bought a book and this is actually, I'm, I'm a little bit early on my recommendation because this is the book I want to talk about for my recommended reading, but I bought a book solely based on the subtitle, which was like 27 years, uh, or wait, no, that's a different book that I met, re recommended before. This is a different book that I heard about that was totally into. Haha. <laughs> this one is called Reading Like a Writer by Francine Prose. And I, it, it was a riveting book. It was absolutely beautifully written. Um, written by a uh, English lit instructor. I can't remember where she teaches. Um, but she goes into all this incredible detail about what she learns from careful reading. And one of the things that the book taught me was that speed reading it shouldn't be anyone's goal, but like attentive reading should be the goal. And because I've been obsessed with the idea that I'm not reading fast enough and I, and I could always be reading more. But once I read that book and it was like, no, slow down, read mm. sentences over and over again, really examine the craft. Um, it really changed the way that I read. And so the book that I finished most recently uh, the fiction book that I finished most recently was by uh, Peter S. Beagle, who wrote uh, The Last Unicorn. Uh, he released a book with Tachyon Publications called Summerlong, and the language was so beautiful. Uh, the book was so well written that I stopped and I reread, and I took those pieces of advice to heart, and I think I learned a lot as a writer as I read this book because of the attention that I gave um, to the details. And so the book is called uh, Reading Like a Writer by Francine Prose, and I highly recommend it. Um, I think that there is an element in it of this sort of like we're looking too deep like maybe the curtains were just blue like it's possible mm -hmm. that the writer didn't mean something like really esoteric by the blue curtains and they were like blue seems right because I know that's what I'm thinking when I write and someone else is like wow that's really deep and I'm like no it ain't <laughs> it's just <laughs> just so happens that you connected dots that I didn't know that were there um, I think you bring up a good point though about attentive reading and how i mean you could read it you could quadruple your reading speed and you still wouldn't even make a dent in the amount of books there are out there to read and so you're as as contradictory as it might sound slowing down and and just more enjoying the view more and what you can read and reading much less 
you'll get much more out of it because there's a lot to see. And it's not what the writer intended to be there, but it's what's there in the experience of that engagement with words. Um, you know, so, I mean, I know for myself when I read, if I, I tend to read just a little faster than I speak. So I'm a very slow reader. It makes it good for proofreading because don't miss very many typos. But um, I find that reading speed, I'm always taking in what's being said. It's almost like the author is there speaking to me. Um, so so I think that, uh, you know, like I, you could spend time trying to analyze and read in like in an English class. But I mean, I don't think that's necessarily, I think you can get carried away at that point. Absolutely. So. I yeah. think that I think that you're hitting the nail on the head though about the participatory nature of writing and reading, like it's it is a conversation that's happening. Um, it's an asynchronous conversation, mm-hmm. um, and how can you expect to be a better speaker if you don't know how to listen? Mm-hmm. Yeah, very Not true. <laughs> Not just very a hat true. rack, my messy mop of hair, um, <laughs> but. Yeah, I um. Reading is just so wonderful. It's the reason why I wanted to become a writer. So for me, it's kind of a no-brainer. But I do know people who just don't like to read but love to write. Um, mm-hmm. and I I can't relate to that at all. Can either of you guys? Because I wish that I wish that I could talk to that person, especially now where we've given ourselves a small platform to speak on, and I don't know how to even address a person like that. Because for me, reading is the more fun part of writing. Yeah, like just speaking for myself, um, reading is so vital. Like I get my creativity from reading. I'm not copying what the authors are doing. Like I'm not even doing anything remotely similar. But just reading someone else's creative expression gets my own creative mind going. And that's one of the reasons why I read so broadly rather than sticking to just one uh, genre or subgenres because different genres bring different creative elements to the page and then that just gets me thinking in a very different way um so i can't imagine not reading but wanting to write a book i can imagine having to write so much it's hard to find time for reading but you still want to read Mm -hmm. at the end of the day Mm -hmm. yeah and i've been through phases uh in my writing life i mean i've been i've been writing for about 23 years now they have been trying to write stories and kind of branching out from the first encounter with Lord of the Rings as a teenager. Um, And I've been on and off with reading and not reading. I've gone through periods where I'll discover a new author and it's like my entire paradigm of storytelling changes with that encounter. George R. R. Martin was some, was a little, one of the more recent ones the last seven, eight years or so uh, reading his books. I just, it's like I took a quantum leap to a different or maybe more, better metaphor is like I went to a different world um, and discovered a whole new angle of storytelling. And now that I've gotten a little bit more disciplined about making sure I'm reading books or reading stuff, I find every time I read a book, it's like a new layer. And I think that's the importance of reading as a writer because you're going to get locked in. It's like putting a plant in a dark room. It'll grow if you water it, but it's not completely vital you know i have a chance to get connected to the community of storytellers and the possibilities of story um you know so uh so i think for myself uh although i've gone through those periods i can understand why some writers do that because you i mean for me i really was like so caught up in my story and i really wanted to make my story and I wanted to get it right, and I didn't have time to read other books and that kind of stuff. Like, you get so obsessed with it and think that, I don't need to read books anymore because I'm going to start making my own. Um, but, I mean, those were phases I went through my growth as a writer, and I think that that that's just something early on, you know. I mean, I'm sure there are seasoned writers who opt not to read. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know of one. Uh, there's a... Uh, author uh, by the name of Dennis L. McKiernan, who I was a, f- a fan of when I was younger. And uh, he was one of those authors who would respond to fan emails. So I emailed him and and uh, and asked him to read something of mine. And he, he said, I actually don't read books at all. 
just because while I'm writing, I don't want to bias my opinion. I mean, I'm sure he might read, might have read things on and off, but sure. just he would not read while he wrote. That actually get, that that is a good segue into a question that I have uh, for both of you. Um, when you're in the middle of an intense project, is there anything you don't read? For that reason, to try to not uh, either mm. steal ideas, for lack of a better term, or uh, to not to to stay focused on your project are there things that you don't read um for me the answer is no um sometimes i think i'm not a normal writer it's very strange but for me writing is this contained activity like i'm not the type of person that thinks about plots all day um in an upcoming an upcoming episode we're talking about sleep and i'm not one of the writers that can write past 9:30 at night like 9:30 at night my brain shuts off and so, like, when I read, it doesn't affect my plot. I mean, it gets my creative juices going, but it doesn't affect the direction that those creative juices go. Um, but I realize that it's probably just me. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think that's the thing. Everybody is different uh, in mm-hmm. how they're affected. For for myself, I don't. Uh, I don't have that problem. I mean, I kind of approach reading. I don't know. I've, I've found that the right book to read always just seems to come into my hands. Uh, and that was, that was well expressed in a book called the end of your life book club. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. I have. Uh, bit of, you haven't, I have not. You haven't. Okay. Uh, but the, the philosophy, it's, it's a fairly popular book and the philosophy that the author gets across is that the right book just has a way of coming into your hands. Mm-hmm. And when I heard that point, I was like, thought about like many times I've been reading a book and it's just like all the little lights are going on in my head and I just feel like yeah this is what I'm supposed to be reading right now Mm -hmm. um and uh I don't know I so uh, that's how I treat reading and they're like two separate tracks um I find no matter what I read I'm going to get influenced it's going to influence my writing that's just a fact um but the line between where you are a copier and where you're um where you're inspired that has to do with just becoming developing your voice as a writer mm-hmm. and and not being so that you're going to get blown in every every which way there's an interesting notion about copying that was brought up in a recent episode of writing excuses uh, which yeah. if you know me you know that i love that podcast more than life itself me too i'm a big um, fan it's like the greatest podcast i'm going on the cruise i'm like fully committed to that lifestyle um but in the, in a recent episode the, one of their new contributors, whose name I've completely forgotten and feel awful about, uh, she's a creative writing teacher, and she, she expressed this thing that I've never thought of before, which was the notion that fine art students uh, do what's called a master study. They look at a, at a painting, and they copy it. They examine it for its... They examine it for the way that brush strokes work, for how light is being interpreted. They, they look at it very closely, and they copy it down as closely as they can stroke for stroke, or they'll take a look at a specific element of it and try to express that element using their own physical movements. And she wondered why writers don't do that. Like, why writers don't sit with a passage that they find particularly good and just write the words slowly to sort of get a different feel for them. And since hearing that, I've had this, like, itching in my brain to try it. Mm -hmm. And... I, there's there's a number of books that I can think of that I would love to just leaf through and find a great passage. Like I think that Rothfuss's work is so artistically beautiful that I would love to to sit with a with a page and like copy it down word for word and see how that feels. Um, I don't know if anything will come of it, but I think I'm gonna try it because um, you know my girlfriend just started art school and she's going through all this stuff and she's creating with her hands and she's interacting with things and she's copying things down and it's teaching her a tremendous amount. Um, so I wonder if the same can be said of writing. Um, I'm certainly going to try it. Uh, we're, we are almost at time, um, and our prompt for this, for this episode is for you to go out and get a book on craft and then read it. And I think that John, of the three of us, is probably the best to recommend a, a book on craft. What is your favorite craft book? I think I've recommended this in last season, but it's so good that I would recommend it again. It's called Story Trump's Structure 
by Stephen James. I think it was the first episode of this season. <laughs> Did I recommend it? Okay, well, then why don't I recommend another one? <laughs> <laughs> but if it's that good, like, obviously go read it. But if you've got another in the hopper. Yeah, um, I actually, I would recommend um, The Anatomy of Story by John Truby. And I have a reason for recommending that one. Uh, it's because if, if you're a heavy-duty plotter, you like to plot your novels out ahead of time, that one is awesome. It, it just covers so much. And I feel like Story Trump structure is the Panzer's friend, which is sort of like the Panzer's equivalent. Mm. So the Panzer's seat of your pants writing, you know, they, they, they're, they go beautiful together. I mean, for myself, I find every writing book, it's just like tools. It's I, mm-hmm. I don't treat it like I have to use all these rules. I just love the ideas. I get inspired. I, I keep things. I throw things away. Um, but those are just two great perspectives. So The Anatomy of Story by John Truby. Cool. So that is two recommended books. Well, three, actually. We have The Anatomy of Story by John Truby, Story Trump's Structure by Stephen James, Stephen and James. Reading Like a Writer by Francine Prose. So you have a lot of reading to do, listeners. Um get to it and we will see you next time <laughs>